Hello, I'm Ollie and this is Criminally, where I talk about crime, pulp, horror, that kind of thing. Today, crime, I'm doing my top 10 crime reads of 2023. So I put up a top 10 horror reads of 2023 video yesterday. Uh, today you get my top 10 crime reads of 2023. Um, and like in that horror list, there's a mix here of, of classics, of stuff through the decades, uh, and some stuff that was published this year as well. So a variety of different things to talk about. There are a couple of series I'm going to be talking about in this list rather than individual books. Um, and there's a, a, a manga series as well as traditional novels. So a variety of different things. So without further ado, let me get on with the list. So at number 10, uh, one of those classics, um, that is The Moonstone by Wilkie Collins, the classic detective story, sometimes considered to be the first detective story. Um, so Collins was a contemporary and, and indeed friend of Charles Dickens. Um, I've always found Collins's books to be more enjoyable than Dickens. Dickens I find a bit stuffy and boring. Um, Collins is just typically just fun and the moonstone is no exception so this is a book about the the theft of a hugely valuable uh, precious gem um, and various people trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together and f and figure out exactly what happened um, so really really entertaining has a variety of different narrators in it including one who is is probably my most um, that was a character I enjoyed reading most this year. Uh, this kind of elderly servant uh, who works at this at this kind of grand mansion, um, and who is involved early on in the investigation into the theft of this of, of this gem, the moonstone. Um, he was an absolutely fantastic character and really made the book for me. Um, but a really interesting early detective novel as well. Um, you can definitely see some of the, the tropes of that kind of country house style of um, of mystery novel that became you know really prevalent in the um, in the genre in the 20th century. Um, so yeah that's my number 10 pick. Um, at number nine uh, the first of the series I mentioned and, and this is an author actually who appears twice in this list. Um, so the series is the Boney Rodenbar uh, series of mysteries. The author is Lawrence Block. So I've read the first three of these now and they're just such fun. Um, so Bernie Rodenbar is a burglar and, and the, the books in the series all have burglar in the title. Um, he's a burglar and in, inevitably ends up getting involved in murder mysteries. So for example in the second book in the series um, he's burgling an apartment, he hides in the closet because the, uh, the owner of the apartment comes home um, and she gets murdered and he then has to try and solve that murder himself. So they are kind of tra fairly traditional murder mysteries um, but with the added element of, of Bernie who's a fantastic narrator and just a really enjoyable character um, to spend a bit of time with. So yeah, number nine on the list, the Bernie, Bernie Rodenbar Mysteries um, by Lawrence Block. Um, the second series um, is at number eight and that is the Hap and, Le Hap and Leonard series uh, by Joel Lansdale. So I've read four of these now. Actually no, I've read five of these now but four of them I read this year. Um, and, and in fact those four books I read back to back. That's how much I was enjoying them. I just couldn't stop reading them. Um, so Hap and Leonard are two um, fairly hapless guys um, who live in Texas who kind of do like manual labour and things like that and fairly down on their luck um, and end up getting involved in, in various, um, you know, solving various mysteries and writing various wrongs. And the thing that's wonderful about Hap and Leonard as a couple of characters is that they are just, their hearts are so completely in the right place and while they are um, you know not afraid to to use their fists and and you know there is quite a lot of violence in these books they're always striving to do the right thing um, so they're a really engaging likeable couple of characters the other thing that I think Joel Lansdale does really well in these books is talk about various political issues so the um, the kind of twist if you like to the to the partnership of Hap and Leonard is while Hap is a you know kind of typical white Texan um, Leonard is black and he's gay so there's lots of discussion of racism and homophobia and things like that in these books but it's done in a really natural way um, it's just things that naturally occur with these characters so it never feels preachy but it's really effective um, and they are just 
endlessly enjoyable characters to spend time with. The banter between them is very, very amusing at times. Um, definitely not necessarily politically correct, but very, very funny. Um, so yeah, Happen Leonard is at uh, number eight in my top ten of the year. Um, at number seven, a book by an author not typically thought of as a crime writer, um, but I'm really enjoying his crime fiction, which he started writing more recently. Uh, so the author is Stephen King. The book is Holly. Uh, his latest book, so this is a 2023 release, um, following his character Holly Gibney, who he introduced a few years ago. This is just a great mystery, just a really enjoyable thriller. And it's one of those books where you know who you know you know who done it right from the start you know who the villains of the piece are and the enjoyment in the book is is in following holly the detective as she figures it out for herself um so there's real tension and suspense in this book the villains are absolutely despicable really really horrible people um so it's great to see holly uh, you know solve solve the mysteries and bring them to justice which you know inevitably she does it is a mystery novel after all um but yeah a fantastically gripping and enjoyable read and holly is a great central character um at number six, uh, the manga series I mentioned. So I haven't quite finished this series yet. There are nine volumes in total. I've read the first seven, um, but it definitely makes the list because I think it's fantastic. Uh, that is Monster by Na uh, Naoki Urasawa. So this is, it, it's almost more of a thriller than a, than a kind of crime or mystery novel. Um, but it is absolutely fantastic. So it follows this doctor um, who's Japanese, who is living in Europe, um, who, who uh, uh, in the first book um, saves this um, this young kid who's been injured, um, and he the the kid has a twin, and there's all sorts of weird mystery stuff going on with these twins and with their adopted parents, um, and the book follows the doctor as later on he tries to track them down and find out exactly what was going on um, what was going on with them. So there's a string of murders that he's investigating. There's all sorts of kind of running around all over Europe. There's some really, really creepy stuff um, as well. It kind of fringes on, it kind of gets to the fringes of the horror genre at times, I think, as does Holly. Um, I think Monster does a bit as well, just because some of the some of the backstory in this book is really, really creepy. Um, but a fantastically gripping story. I can't wait to finish it. Um, and the thing that Urasawa does really well in this is introduce incidental characters and give them engaging, interesting backstories and make you really care about them. Um, so whilst the, the hero in this book is an interesting character, he's a fairly he's a fairly kind of typical hero. Um, you know, kind of trying to do the right thing. The real richness in this in this series comes from the from the other characters who really do add something to the to the overall experience. Um, at number five, then uh, we have the second book by Lawrence Block. So he's the only author um, who appears twice in this list. Um, that book is The Naked and the Deadly, uh, edited by uh, Robert Dice and Wyatt Doyle. Um, so. Um, Dyson, Dyson Doyle run uh, Men's Adventure, um, what's it called? The Men's Adventure Library, which is a, a publisher that publishes fantastic series of, they do like a quarterly kind of magazine style thing, uh, but also do lovely books like this, where they reprint stories and articles and artwork um, from Men's Adventure kind of pulp type magazines from the 50s and 60s. Um, this one collects stories and articles written by Lawrence Block, and is an absolute joy to read. So there are some fantastic kind of crime and, and hard-boiled mystery type stories in here. There's some really interesting articles as well um, and fantastic um, illustrations plucked from those old magazines too. Um, just like that. Um, so yeah, just a wonderful slice of kind of pulp entertainment. I had a great time with this book. It was just pure pleasure from beginning to end. At number four, another one of those classics, uh, The Lady in the Lake by Raymond Chandler. Uh, so one of the Philip Marlowe mysteries. Marlowe is just such a great character, such an archetypal hardball detective. And I really enjoyed the mystery in The Lady in the Lake as well. There's a load of stuff going on in here. Um, I won't go into detail because I think it's quite an easy story to spoil. Um, but a fantastic hardball mystery. And Chandler's writing is just 
impeccable. His prose is just perfect. Um, I never have a bad time with a with a Raymond Chandler sentence. Um, just his his sentence structure, his use of simile and things like that is really really wonderful and makes for a very enjoyable read. Um, and the mystery is fantastic as well. Just ahead of that, at number three, another classic, Double Indemnity by James N. Cain. So a fantastically twisted and twisting noir story um, about a, um, a an unlikely couple um, plotting a murder. Just incredibly tense and gripping. Um, and Cain does that kind of desperate character um, in a way that nobody else quite manages to do. I think he, he gets under the skin of his characters in a really fantastic way. Um, so a very worthy entry at number three in the list. Um, at number two, the second book on the list from 2023, um, and that is All the Sinners Bleed by S.A. Cosby, a fantastically gripping and disturbing mystery um, about the, the black sheriff uh, of a small town in the rural US um, investigating a horrible series of crimes. Um, so um, S.A. Cosby is, my, I think, probably my favourite currently writing crime author. I think he's just absolutely brilliant. And this book is, is no exception. It's really gripping. He has great characters. He does a great job of kind of giving you the backstory of the sheriff's life. So both his, his kind of previous job. So he was a, a federal agent previously, um, but also his relationship with his family, which is kind of central to the story um, and really, really well handled. Um, but the, the mystery is brilliantly done as well, as is the depiction of this small town and the kind of racial tensions and things like that within it. Um, so a book that's got a lot going on and packs all of that into a relatively small number of pages um, and ends up being a really, really gripping read. Um, at number one then, and this may not be a surprise given that I've been reading this author all year, so I think I've read 12 books by uh, this author, that author being Patricia Highsmith um, in 2023. My favourite of them uh, was The Sweet Sickness. Um, so like all of Highsmith's books, this is a, a psychological thriller um, with really, really fascinating characters. This one is about a guy who's obsessed with this woman who he's been having a relationship with. Um, and who desperately wants to, to keep that relationship going. Um, and the book goes in all sorts of, of different directions, as, as Highsmith books tend to, um, but culminates in one of, the, one of the best endings I've read in a book for a long time, certainly the best ending I've read in a book this year. The ending of this book literally took my breath away um, and was just fantastically... Um, gripping and moving and kind of one of those endings that makes you reconsider everything you've read up to that point in the book. Um, so I really did think The Sweet Sickness was a, a phenomenal book. Highsmith is a great writer and um, for me this is definitely one of her best. So I hope you found that interesting. hope you've read lots of great crime books in 2023 as well. Let me know what you thought on my list. Let me know if you've read any of them and as always thanks very much for watching. I hope you're safe and well out there. hope you're reading good stuff and I'll speak to you again very soon. Cheerio.